you know when you open the door like if you're in a public toilet or the doors you when you open them they go out <laughs> they don't come in and that was so weird because then i would have to think about okay is there no one walking past on the outside that i would knock them with the door you know of course the cars are all left hand drive i don't know how many times i when i was getting into the passenger seat i would go to the left side because of course as a south african i'm so used to you know people sitting on the right hand side when they drive and you as a passenger sitting on the left and the road is the same that was pretty strange because when you write you write from left to right right you don't write from right to left and i just remember in high school they would always be like single file ladies left hand side single file and so even when i walk i walk on my left it just it makes sense you know apparently not um for everyone so i recently went to austria way toward the end of september so i was contacted about this gig i would say sometime in march i was approached to do a commissioned work for a few concerts that were going to be happening the thing is is that these concerts were going to be a string ensemble and at first i was like mm, i don't know if i can write for strings i mean i've never written for strings i know about harmony and all of that but i don't even know what the range of string instruments is because i'm literally i'm so in the jazz world even having classical background like violins were never a thing that i really dealt with but the person who approached me had found me through my YouTube channel and had found me through listening to my music and he was really just excited to work with me and he really wanted to work with me and he was saying that, you know, it's not that we would expect you to compose in a specific way and we really are welcoming of your South African sounds and things that influence you. And so I was, I guess I was drawn to that. As much as I was thinking to myself, this is going to be such a challenge. Um, I was like, you know what, let me do it. Because it's not always that you get an opportunity that is completely paid for to go to another country to do what you do. And so I accepted. And also, I was asked to write a 20 to 30 minute work. So this is kind of like a sweet situation, like movement situation. <laughs> I was like, where, how am I going to do this? But in any way, I've faced so many challenges in my life that I have seen how I'm able to overcome something and get to the finish line where I was like, okay, this is another one of those. Let's see where it takes me.
I started writing the piece. I kind of actually started it with an idea that I already had and then that idea kind of expounded itself into other sections. Honestly, even to this day, I don't know how I finished the piece. But like I said, they were open to different interpretive styles. So I had improvised sections. You know, even with those improvised sections, the majority of it was a composed piece. So. I really just had to whip out my harmony chops, <laughs> listen to some strings, just yeah, apply all that knowledge. During the year, I fell pregnant. So, so now the thing with that is that initially these concerts are supposed to be happening in August, but then they were moved to the end of September. And by then I would have been 32, 31, 32 weeks pregnant i obviously didn't know but i then soon found out that some airlines will require you to have a doctor's note between 32 and 36 weeks so i'm thinking now oh snap am i even gonna be able to do this am i gonna let these people down and other than that i really wanted to go i really wanted you know to do this gig the rules on emirates is that at 32 weeks between 32 and 36 weeks you need a doctor's note so it's like okay cool by the time i get back i would have been 35 weeks and a few days so that gives me the perfect space to have a doctor's note because any further than 36 weeks i wouldn't really be able to fly unless it was for emergency or something like that it says so that coupled with traveling in economy class was the most stressful thing one of the worst experiences of my life because in economy you're sitting like livestock and of course i had gained weight I mean, I'm still pregnant now, but you probably won't see this video until I'm not pregnant. We hadn't really told anyone besides close family and friends. So you probably won't see this video until I've had my precious baby girl, my first child. At the time, sitting in economy, whoa, it was really, really stressful. And I had two flights, one nine hour flight and a six hour flight. You know, I had not experienced any swelling feet in my pregnancy. Glory to God for that. I had not experienced any cramps during my pregnancy. But when I flew in economy class for that many hours, I saw my legs and my feet swell up for the first time. And I was like, yeah, it's bad. It's really bad. Some of the things that I experienced in Austria were quite interesting, but I didn't actually go to Austria like in the city part of it. I was in Vorarlberg, but that area is kind of like more chilled out. I would say town slash country vibe. It does the vibe it was giving me. Chilled out to the maximum. Some funny things in Austria, you know, when you open the door, like if you're in a public toilet or the doors, you when you open them, they go out. <laughs> they don't come in. And that was so weird because then I would have to think about, okay, is there no one walking past on the outside that I would knock them with the door, you know? All the doors were like that. That was so strange for me. Of course, the cars are all left-hand drive. I don't know how many times I... When I was getting into the passenger seat, I would go to the left side because, of course, as a South African, I'm so used to, you know, people sitting on the right hand side when they drive and you as a passenger sitting on the left and the road is the same. That was pretty strange because when you write, you write from left to right, right? You don't write from right to left. And I just remember in high school, they would always be like, single file, ladies, left hand side, single file. And so even when I walk, I walk on my left. It just, it makes sense, you know. Apparently not um, for everyone. All the plug-in points on the walls are two-point. That is so strange for me because I feel like here in SA, I'm always fighting to get a, an adapter with the two-point plug because all the power points are three-point. And I had a charger because I bought my laptop 
at the time I was still working on my dissertation and I was hoping to get some work done and I had a three point charger. The flat that I was in, there were no three points. I even asked for adapters. Even the adapters there have two point plugins. At checkout at the supermarket, there's no one, guys, there's no one packing your bags for you. Like, and the teller works so fast. Like, people there are like, there's no time to be chit chatting, you know, having a good time. She's like, did, 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 card. And then you, you, by the time she's done, you're just sitting there with a whole bunch of groceries and you have to pack everything yourself. I'm so used to South Africa where people be packing, you know, putting things for you in your plastic bag. Yeah, that was, that was that. Some of the strange things that I found about Austrian life. About the piece, the piece turned out much better than I had expected and it was received much better <laughs> than I had expected because as I said, it was my first time writing for a string ensemble. So we had violin, one and two, I had viola and cello, double bass, conga and I was on piano and vocals. So that was kind of like the ensemble that I was writing for. And it, it was really challenging, but the piece ended up having five sections. Um, and the recording itself ended up being about 23 minutes. I'll put a link in the description if you want to go visit their channel. Because all the pieces are on there that we performed. Austrian people, the ones that I did come across, are super, super nice. They're super sweet. Um, you know, they don't have a complex about them they like people like they like people living their life you know in they so i know a lot of people who watch my channel are watching for inspiration are watching for to learn how to play um, and just overall guidance as it comes to being a musician one thing i will say being a musician there's no written out thing that says okay you must do this and then you will get to this level and then that one may watch this video and say how do you even get those experiences where someone calls you to go overseas and do a gig and in my experience it's like you kind of have to put yourself out there Ugh, that whole phrase is so annoying even as it rolled out my tongue <laughs> you have to make yourself known and show what you are capable of doing and I think that you shouldn't be afraid to say what you have to say musically. Um, and I think that you need to put in the work in terms of practice, in terms of your craft. You don't have to be someone who practices like an insane amount. If you want to do that, go for it. Um, I'm not against that. But the one thing that you have to do, however much you do practice, you have to be consistent about it. And you have to make sure that you challenge yourself when you practice. So making yourself known, networking. I don't think I, I would have ever had that this gig if I didn't release an album and if I didn't have a YouTube channel because how else would I have been invited if no one knew? I could have been a pianist playing here in Cape Town, you know, still on the same level, still playing, you know, well. But if I hadn't recorded an album... And if I had not put YouTube videos out to show what I am capable of, then people would not be able to find me. Other than that, it's also to network with people. And networking can come in different forms. I think it's not to say that, you know, after you've done a gig, you have to stay and talk to everyone. Really, that's, that's not the case. But I think the more you make yourself known, the more people will contact you to say, okay, there's something that's happening. And I think that you would be perfect for that. So don't be afraid to record your own music and don't be afraid to, I don't know, just share what you have to share, but make sure that you are putting in the work. Don't just, don't just put something out there just to put something out there. Make sure that you're putting in the work. One thing I will always advocate for is to put in the work. <laughs> like there's just no getting around it. And, um, pray about it everything else will kind of work itself out and you'll find yourself in spaces with people who can lead you in the in the direction that you want to go i just felt like encouraging someone out there more exciting things to come and i'm excited to share that 
with you i'm so excited that this year is ending as well i'm just you know i can feel that you know as a woman how you can feel the cycles and the seasons coming to an end i just feel that this is such a beautiful ending of this year i don't know this year is kind of you know i just feel like we're in a different season and i'm so excited about 2023 whatever challenges come out of it it is what it is um but i think there will also be some beautiful things that come out of it i uh, hope you enjoyed this video and again if you want to see the full performance look at the link down below and um, i'll see you guys in the next video bye